So when I was starting my freelancing career, takot na takot ako sa interview. If pwede lang sana na bigyan na ako ng trabaho without the interview, I would accept it. But I didn't realize kung gaano ka importante yun. Hey everyone, welcome to the Filipino Freelancer YouTube channel. I want to start off by saying maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga recently na nag-subscribe to the channel. At the time of making this video, we are at 608 subscribers. And so I just want to say welcome. Welcome to the Filipino Freelancer community. I'm humbled by your trust and support and I promise to continue to give value as best as I can. And para sa mga subscribers dati dati pa since the channel started, I thank you as well for sticking with me. I'm grateful for your support and this channel would literally be nothing without you guys. So again, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you, thank you very much. Sa video na to, we are talking about the five things I wish I knew before I started freelancing. Now, nung ginagawa ko ang script for this video, naisip ko itakal yung mga common concerns about freelancing like pricing, strategy, client handling. But ultimately, naisip ko, what if I take a different route and talk about some things that you might not normally think of when it comes to starting a freelancing career. And I want to say na most of these things that I will be sharing with you, I could only truly learn and absorb during the process. But still, I thought it would be interesting to reflect and imagine what it would be like if I had known about these concepts before I started freelancing. Sana itong ishishare ko ngayon can help you in your freelancing career. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will be better equipped in your freelancing career and that much closer to success. So without further ado, let's begin this video. First thing I wish I knew a lot more about before I started freelancing is mindset. Now, most people don't think about mindset, including me, because it's not necessarily a sexy topic. It's not as exciting as, say, pricing or getting clients. But mindset is super, super important. Mindset is the foundation upon which your freelancing career is built. Not the mga strategies, mga tactics, they won't work without the proper mindset. I actually made a separate video about mindset. You can check it out in the description box below. But just to give you a brief summary, mindset is all about your beliefs, how you think of yourself, how you think of others, how you approach your freelancing career, and how you approach prospective clients. So to give you an example, one aspect of mindset is limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are usually beliefs that are planted in us when we were young. For example, in my case, when I was a kid, I was constantly bullied because I was overweight. And so the limiting belief that was planted in me at that age was I wasn't good enough. Since I was always bullied at that time for being overweight, I had this image of myself that I wasn't good enough. And it still carried over even when I grew up. And it showed up in my freelancing career in terms of approaching clients. Even before I approached clients, I had this belief in my mind now, why would they need my service? Why would they need my help? Am I good enough to help their business? And so I had to go through this process of finding the root cause of that belief, kung bakit ko siya iniisip, and I had to tackle it straight on. And so for your case, it could be different. Maybe these beliefs were planted by your parents or other relatives. Whatever it is, it's a belief that is not true, but it's holding you back. And the really challenging thing about limiting beliefs is that subconsciously, we are looking for things around us to affirm that belief. So let's say, for example, I'm thinking na hindi ako magaling. If hindi pa ako aware of that limiting belief, Everywhere I look, I look for confirmation na hindi ako magaling. So let's say, for example, I got rejected by a client. If hindi ako aware sa limiting belief ko, I would say, Tama, nare-reject talaga ako kasi hindi ako magaling eh. I'm not good enough. And so the most important aspect of limiting beliefs is self-awareness. You have to start with being aware of that limiting belief. And when I got self-awareness of that limiting belief, Super lucky ng effect niya sa akin when I was approaching clients. Now, I was no longer self-conscious if I was good enough or not. All I know is that I can give them value and I believed in my ability to give value. And so that's what I mean when I say that if your mindset isn't at the right place yet, mahirapan kang i-apply yung mga strategies. Even though these strategies are the best, mahirapan ka because the mindset is not there yet. And another mindset concept that I learned was judging others. To say when you judge other people, you fear of being judged yourself. And that fear paralyzes you from taking action. So let's say you want to create content for your business, whether that be through a Facebook post or a video. If you're afraid of being judged, that will stop you from posting that content. And so if you don't post that content, prospective clients won't be able to know of you or to see your content. And the key pala to stopping that fear is to be self-aware when you are judging people. Because when you stop judging people, or at very least you are self-aware that you are judging other people, 
you let go of the fear of being judged. Super simple lang yun na concept but it really worked for me and especially with these YouTube videos. That day I was struggling with putting out content because I was self-aware, I was conscious of what other people might think of this content. But I just stopped being judgmental of other people and being self-aware when I was doing that. And that helped me let go of the fear of being judged. And now I've been able to make videos every week for the past five months. And so to wrap up yung concept about mindset, number one is you have to look into yourself if you have any limiting beliefs that have been planted there when you were a child. And you have to be self-conscious when you're judging others because when you judge others, you fear being judged yourself. And that stops you from taking action. Second thing that I wish I knew before I started freelancing was the revenue line. Now, if you don't know the revenue line, which I had no idea what it was before I started freelancing, it's basically leads, conversions, retention. Every business in the world has these three parts. If you are aware of the revenue line and you understand it, you can position yourself as a freelancer who can solve one or all three of these. So number one is leads. This is the constant flow of customers or clients that you are driving to your business because as we know, if wala customers or clients, your business will not last long. Second is conversion. So this is the part where you turn your leads into actual customers or clients. So this is sales where you're converting your leads into sales. And the last part is retention. So it's the part where you get customer loyalty or client loyalty. This is where you deliver the value that you promised and clients come back to your service or come back to your products. And so if alam mo yung revenue line, you can position yourself as a freelancer who can be in lead generation, conversions, or retention. Say if you know where you are in the revenue line, you know how much impact you can have to that business. And if you know how much impact you can have to a business, then you can charge premium. Third thing I wish I knew is the market offer copy formula. The market is 50%, the offer is 40%, and the copy is 10%. 50% of win or success is marketing to the right target market. If you market to the right market, somebody will buy. Ang laging analogy na sinasabi ng mentor ko is if you were selling ice water and you went to the desert where madaming tao na dumadaan and kailangan nila ng tubig, kahit hindi mo i-market na for sale yung product mo, just put it in front of them and for sure, they will buy. They won't even ask the price. All they know is that kailangan nila ng tubig and they need your product. So that's the importance of having a target market. So no matter how good your offer is, if you're marketing it to the wrong audience, it will not sell. It's like selling dog food to cat owners. 40% of the win is your offer. Good offer will outsell a good copy, but a good copy will not outsell the bad offer. And of course, 10% is the copy or the words that you write or the words that you say to present your offer. Like most beginning freelancers, na stuck ako sa copy. I was so concerned with the way I presented my offer. I was so concerned with the words that I was saying to my prospective client. But in reality, it's only 10%. If you have the right offer in front of the right market, you're 90% there. The fourth thing that I wish I knew more about before I started freelancing is the discovery call or the strategy session. So when I was starting my freelancing career, takot na takot ako sa interview. If pwede lang sana na bigyan na ako ng trabaho without the interview, I would accept it. But I didn't realize kung gaano ka importante yung discovery call or yung strategy session. You have to think about it not as an interview, but as an opportunity for us to ask questions. As a typical freelancer kasi, when a client asks for a call, we think of it as an interview. At least I did. So pagdating sa call, he was asking, he or she was asking all the questions. And ako, sagot lang ako ng sagot, trying to prove myself, trying to qualify myself as the best freelancer for the job. And so the client is in control. Siya yung nag ask ng questions, siya yung nag gather ng information, and siya yung nag qualify if I'm a fit for their business. But in reality, it should be the other way around. As freelancers, we should think about ourselves as doctors. Diba when you approach a doctor, pagdating dun, hindi naman ikaw yung nagtatanong eh. Di mo naman tinatanong, Doc, ano yung natapos mo? Or ilan yung awards na panalunan mo? Or ilan yung pasyente na natulungan mo? Hindi ganun, di ba? It's the other way around. Yung doctor ang nagtatanong sa atin kung ano yung problema natin. The doctor is gathering data and diagnosing the problem. And that's exactly what freelancers should be doing. When we get on the discovery call with our prospective clients, we are gathering data and diagnosing the problem. That way, we can evaluate if our offer is a good solution for their problem. And so to know more about the discovery call or the strategy session, I recommend the book Socratic Selling. I will leave a link 
in the description box below. Super helpful niya in terms of how a discovery call should go and what type of questions you should be asking your prospective client. And the last thing I wish I knew more about before I started freelancing is my approach to connecting. When you are connecting with prospective clients, the goal shouldn't be just to close the deal or to get a client. The goal should be to build rapport build a relationship, build a friendship, build a connection. When I was starting to say I had no idea of the concept of connecting, all I had in my mind was to get the job. And I forgot the fact that these businesses are people just like us. They have real problems and the only way to surface that problem is to connect with them on a personal level or to connect with them on an emotional level and not think of them as just numbers on a piece of paper. And so the goal of connecting should be just to build a rapport, build a connection, build a friendship with that prospective client. That way, if they need your service now or down the line, ikaw yung may isip nila. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to connect them just to get a call or to close a deal. So think of them as a person that you're trying to help. And in order for you to help them, you have to build this relationship first. Those are the five things I wish I knew before I started freelancing. Hopefully you got a lot of value out of this video and hopefully this can help you in your freelancing career right now. If you want to know more about mindset and some other freelancing topics, then check out the video on the screen right now. Here's your success on your freelancing career and I'm excited for your journey.